Well, everyone, once a year or probably like 30 times a year, depending on how many videos I make, I always try to look at, you know, which iPhones are the best values per dollar. And this is pretty much my breakdown of the phones that I would recommend for each hundred dollar increment of prices on pretty much the market right now in the early part of 2021. Now prices do fluctuate. So sometimes these phones may become more expensive. The chances of that happening are very low. Most of the time they're going to go down, which is a really good thing for you as a buyer. So I'll go ahead and start off with a hundred dollar recommendation. So pretty much the phones or the iPhones that I would recommend to somebody who has, you know, $100 to spend. And before I even say these, I just want to say one little caveat. If you have, you know, the most amount of money, if you have unlimited money to spend, getting the iPhone 12s, getting the most expensive, the newest phones is always a better way to go. Those are just going to future proof yourself like crazy, but those aren't necessarily the best deals in my opinion. And it just doesn't really make the most sense all the time, especially for the iPhone 12s. But if you have all the money, pick up the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Those are the best phones you can pick up. So with that out of the way, the best iPhones for around that $100 price tag, there's three of them that I came with. The first one I would recommend is the iPhone 7. I feel like the iPhone 7 right now in 2021 is still is probably around like 120, 130, but I can sense that probably around like March or April, it's probably going to be less than $100, just like how the iPhone successes in a lot of places. And if you look on places like eBay, some on Amazon as well, these are really good quality phones, you know, for that price tag. If you can get them, I would not spend more than 300 on a phone like this that's ridiculous but for a hundred dollars in the used market this is a very capable phone it's still getting software support the camera on the back is pretty decent it's still pretty okay in terms of performance you still have that check range jailbreak which is really cool and it's just a really good phone overall there's really nothing that's insanely horrible about it maybe besides the battery life but even then that's pretty justifiable because it is you know a 2016 phone the second phone i would recommend was the iphone success now this is obviously the predecessor to the iPhone 7, so I would rather pick up an iPhone 7 or recommend an iPhone 7 over the 6S, but the 6S is still a really decent phone as well. It is one of the oldest supported iPhones currently right now in terms of iOS 14, so you still have all those iOS 14 capabilities, you still have a lot of different things like that. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. It probably has more problems than the iPhone 7. But, you know, if you can pick one up for like less than $80 or something and you really need an iPhone, that is not a bad iPhone either. But the next recommendation, the iPhone SE, that's a phone that I would recommend over the iPhone success just because of the stability of that phone. I've always felt like the iPhone SE was a more stable and more predictable phone overall than the success. And I always thought it had better battery life, kind of better performance too, even though they have the same chipset. I know it's so weird to say, but I've always felt like the iPhone SE was a better phone overall than the iPhone success. So those three phones are the phones that I would recommend around that $100 price tag. Now the next one, the $200 price tag, there's two phones that I would recommend here. And those two phones are the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 7 Plus. Now, I've looked around, I've seen some iPhone 8s for less than 200, I've seen some iPhone 7 Pluses for less than 200, and these are typically for the base models. If you try to get the 64 gig or 128 gig or 256, whatever one you're going to get, obviously it's going to be more expensive, so keep that in mind. Now, if it was between these two phones, I would probably recommend the iPhone 8. It's a newer phone, it has you know a better feeling to it, and it arguably has a better front camera and a back camera as well. You know, the quality of these phones, the quality of these photos are really good, and especially the fact that the iPhone SE 2 just came out for $399, that also took a toll on the iPhone 8's resale value as well because it went down quite a bit. Apple was still selling the iPhone 8 up until last year. So this is a pretty good price to, you know, to pay for a phone like this. You're going to be supported for a very long time on this device. As long as you don't mind the size of it, the iPhone 8 is a very, very good phone for that price tag. And the iPhone 7 Plus is a bigger model of the iPhone 7, which I've, you know, recommended the $100 price tag. And it still has a lot of capability as well. You know, you still have a very big panel that's actually pretty good. iOS support for at least another year or two, who knows? But it's still getting support for a little bit of time. You have check range jailbreak on both these phones, which is really cool. And at the end of the day, it's an iPhone. You have the Apple ecosystem. So for around that $200 price, tag these two phones are the probably the ones that i would recommend now the 300 dollars price tag of devices these are the ones that i'm honestly most excited about for 2021 and i'm just waiting to see you know how cheap these phones can get now i'll start off with my first recommendation the iphone 8 plus the second one is my favorite recommendation on this list to be honest but i've seen a lot of iphone 8 pluses for even less than 250 so 300 you can easily pick up maybe even like the 256 gig model of the iphone 8 plus for 300 who knows but i'll definitely tell you the 8 plus is a killer phone
phone for the price tag. It has a lot of capability still. You have that dual camera setup, which is still really good. Like you actually have a lot of capability on that type of device. The screen is still pretty good. The build quality is awesome. Like I stated, accessories are cheap on this phone too. If you're really into that, you still have touch ID on this phone. And in this day and age, wearing masks and stuff, it is a pretty important thing. If I'm being honest, having that capability of having a fingerprint sensor is really important. And like I said before, check range, jailbreak, all that stuff. You know, the 8 Plus is a killer phone even now in 2021. But this next one, the iPhone 10, this is probably the best phone you can pick up for that price tag for $300, even on any price tag on an iPhone phone this is arguably the best value per dollar they are you know fluctuating 320 350 290 sometimes and in some cases but typically an iphone 10 you can pick up for around that 300 on average and that is a really really good price to pay for a phone of this magnitude now you have that gesture based design so you have a pretty current looking phone if you look at the front of the iphone 10 and you look at the front of the iphone 12 very little differences the 12s are bigger and they have a little bit of different design but they're pretty much almost the same as I think, if I'm being honest. The fluidity of this phone is awesome. You have a lot of capability when it comes down to just that gesture-based design, multitasking, and all that stuff. You're still getting software support for a very long time with that A11 Bionic chip. Same thing as the 8 Plus, but with the iPhone 10, you're kind of feeling like you have a more current phone because of that design. With Face ID, that's probably its only disadvantage, you know, over Touch ID nowadays, but it still has a lot of capability when it comes down to it. And like I said, when you have a phone like an iPhone 10, you are definitely going to feel like you have a current phone with amazing build quality, pretty good performance still, pretty good cameras, and there's nothing really about the iPhone 10 that's really bad or that's like controversial right now. There was when it first came out, but as of right now, I think the iPhone 10 is probably my best recommendation on this list. Now the next iPhone I would recommend or the next set are the iPhone 10R and the iPhone 10S for around that $400 price tag. So for $400, you can pick up both these phones. And honestly, I would probably recommend picking up an iPhone XS because it is the better value. It's the what it was the flagship in 2018, but the 10R does have a bigger battery and arguably better battery life than the 10S. So that's pretty much how I would kind of sum that up. If you need more performance and heavier, you know, performance and you know more RAM and all that stuff, the iPhone XS is the better way to go. But if you're looking for something that you know you don't really care about to performance, you still a really good performing phone but you would rather have something that has you know better battery life and that kind of situation the iphone 10r is definitely the better way to go there you're going to be getting almost the same type of performance on both phones since they share the same chipset but you are going to be getting better ram management from the iphone 10s because it has more ram so definitely when it comes down to that standpoint for 400 dollars both these phones are really really good phones for sure and you're going to feel like you have killer devices for whichever one you pick up now for around that 500 dollars price tag honestly there was two that I could think of and the first one being the iPhone 11. Apple is selling these brand new for $599 so you can easily pick these things up on eBay or wherever for you know around $500 probably even less than that and the iPhone 11 is only one generation old. Apple was still selling that up until like a couple months ago and that is a very very good phone. That phone has so much capability. I don't even have to defend it because you guys already know. You already know so much about the iPhone 11 so that is a really good phone and I would recommend that phone even more than the iPhone XS Max which I also put on this list and I think the 10s Max is great has a lot of quality in it has a lot of features and everything built in but I just you know the battery life of the 10s Max wasn't that great and I would honestly recommend people picking up the iPhone 11 more so than the iPhone XS Max for around that $400 price tag. And the last price tag that I wanted to end off with was that $600 price tag because once you get the 700 and over, you can pretty much pick up an iPhone 12, you know, the 12 mini and all that stuff. So I'd probably just kind of stop there. But for $600, there were two phones that I pretty much found that I was kind of shocked about. And those two phones were the iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now, with the iPhone 11 Pro, it was kind of at that $600-ish price tag. The 11 Pro Max was kind of at like $690, kind of closer to $700. But because it was kind of touching that, you know, iPhone 12 price, I still wanted to throw it in here because it's still a really, really good phone. Like, both these phones are killer phones for the most part. The iPhone 11 Pro was the phone that I was using right before I switched over to the iPhone 12 Pro. And I can definitely tell you at the end of the day, the iPhone 11 Pro is really good. I mean, it's probably one, still one of the best 
phones out. It has so much capability for sure. And no matter what you're going to do with this specific phone, the iPhone 11 Pro, it's going to be able to do everything for sure, 100% of the fact. And if you need a little bit of a bigger phone, if you need a little bit of a bigger size, the iPhone 11 Pro Max is going to be there for you. That phone has just as much capability as the iPhone 11 Pro, but it just gives it to you in a bigger form factor. So that is a huge thing. If you need a bigger phone, if you need a bigger battery life, you're going to be getting that from something like the iPhone 11 Pro Max than a lot of other phones. And I think it has the biggest battery from any iPhone that ever came out. So that's another pretty big thing to keep in mind. So when it comes down to the whole entire, you know, $600 price tag, the iPhone 11 Pro Max is probably the best, you know, specific phone at that price range for 600. So that really pretty much covers it up for the most part, you guys. If you want to pick up any of these phones, like I stated, links are down in the description below. You can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. If you guys have any other questions or any other recommendations, leave those down, link down below. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed the video, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.